Hey everybody, it's a it's a new day. Can you believe it? Probably. But I'm recording this at 2.51 p.m. What's up with that, man? Are you crazy? Randomize me? Oh god, Jacob and Esau. To, to anything. I just lost the run with Brimstone, so we're on like a new level of uh, sadness. It happens like once every two years. It happened yesterday. It's okay. Let's let's have some fun. This beat is sick. I want to take a ride on your disco stick. It's 2.51 p.m. I finished my stream at 2 today. Recorded some super auto pets. We're on the new morning stream afternoon record schedule. Evening. Uh, get ready to possibly enjoy life. I'm I'm very eager. You know, we're midway through day one giving it a try. It feels fresh. It feels new. And, uh, hey, it's nice, you know. It gives me some time to farm up some anecdotes in the morning, apply them to Isaac. Then next day, I'm just, I'm excited in general. I think it's going to be a revolutionary life change. And part of the necessary unwinding. You know, like, first year, three years, 18 years, 25 years, 32 years of, a, of an infant's life. Um, very hands-on, you know, like, especially, they, parents say it's a 24-hour job, and that's true. But it goes from being, you know, 24-hour shifts to, like, you know, 12-hour shifts, 12 hours on call. I don't know where we're at right now, but... Uh, Certainly in a in a position where we're starting to release some more of the duties. Why not? Could use the piercing on the stronger unit. Uh, or maybe you need piercing on the weaker unit to make their weaker shots that much more effective. That doesn't really make sense to me now that I think about it. But now that she's in daycare, love and life, kind of mm, still getting adjusted. But, you know, she'll, she'll get there over time. It's a, uh, it's nice, honestly, to... Feel like we're starting to get a little bit of our... I don't want to say like getting our pre-baby lifestyle back. Because that's not really what I mean. Um, but just to be, uh, you know, starting to be human beings who are individuals. As well as also being parents on top is like... is It's, it's a very groovy combination, baby. As Austin Powers said. You know what uh, would be a cool Halloween costume? Really good time for this. This video will come out on November 2nd. <laughs> really good Halloween costume would be um, Stone Cold Steve Austin Powers. Oh, hell yeah, baby. Don't make me open up a can of shag. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to swear. I'm going to... Because if you're watching this with your kids, I want you to know. I know you can rely on me to not swear, but in service of the joke, I have to do it. It must be done. It must be done. Don't make me open up a can of shag ass on you. Cause Stone Cold said so, baby. Yeah. <laughs> I, what is wrong with me? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Take me to the next floor. It was a really good floor to start with. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Oh, man. It could work, man. Stone Cold Steve Austin Powers would actually be... They could have made that joke in Gold Member. Like, I mean, they already did the joke where, like, Hollywood celebrities play... Um, the characters of Austin Powers. And you have to admit, uh, even though the characters of Austin Powers sounds like a, a play that Christopher Marlowe would have written... Hmm... How about, uh, no, Scott? You have to admit, they were a little ahead of their time casting Kevin Spacey as the alternative Dr. Evil. How did they know? I don't... I'm trying to... I'm going too far now, because I was like, do you think... Why was Kevin Spacey in Austin Powers? Do you think he thought it was a Christmas movie? <laughs> you know, because he's releasing all those weird videos as Frank Underwood on Christmas for some reason, just to haunt people. Um, anyway, they could have done that joke in Austin Powers. You know, it, 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 Gold, if they ever make an Austin Powers 4, they gotta do that. During the intro scene, Austin is running from, like, a bunch of... Uh, uh, you know, young ladies who are wearing masks just to... 
keep it in 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 timely you know because that would austin's very much about the timely humor um and then he could go into like a podcast studio and it'd be wait a tick that's your stone cold steve austin and then he could rip off his mask and be like no nah, baby i'm stone cold steve austin powers yeah baby Anyway. It could work, man. It could work. Okay. I, I, I'm, I'm going to write Austin Powers 4 right here. Many people would tell you that is not the way I should spend my time. Too bad. So sad. We're, we still got our deal with the devil here, by the way. Uh, Dr. Evil... Uh, and at, at the end of Goldmember, Dr. Evil and uh, Austin Powers, they uh, are friends again because they remember that they're uh, actually brothers, even though it makes no sense at all. Uh, let's just see what we got going on in here. No brimstone, please. I'd like to win this run. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to have you pick this up. We're going to have you pick this up. And we're going to have you take some pills in case they're health upgrades. That one, clearly not. What? Okay. Fair enough. Um, but they've... You don't have to explain it. Just say, like, they had a falling out. They do that in movies all the time, especially when there's, like, a huge uh, gap between sequels. What is... Uh, what's the plan? Well, number two has come up with a plan for Dr. Evil. It involves creating a dog-based cryptocurrency, pumping it on social media until it makes billions of dollars, and then rug pulling everybody involved and taking all the money to fund their evil empire. They could call it Evil Coin. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, now, you got that going on? What's happened? Austin Powers, having laid dormant, uh, semi retired, let's. Austin Powers has retired from being an international man of mystery because he thought that Dr. Evil had changed the error of his ways. What's he doing? I'm driving for Uber, baby, yeah! My name is Austin, I'll be your driver. Uh, excuse me, uh, could, could you not talk to me, please? Yeah, baby, he doesn't like his job. He doesn't like it. He looks over at his, uh, from his uh, rear view mirror, he, he doesn't have a chance to show his personality on the job, he doesn't like it, but what keeps him going? He looks, Dangling from his rearview mirror, a photo of his now deceased wife, Foxy Cleopatra, as played by Beyonce. They don't, they can't afford her. They can't afford her for this sequel. You know it and I know it. We might as well just get that out of the way. I don't know where we go from here, but I think that's a great start. Lots of great jokes you could make. Did you just fund my tokens, baby? Why am I Robin Leach now? Yeah! <laughs> no! You could, dude, you, you got to admit, like, we got a long way to, we got a long way to go on this one, but Dr. Evil's plan to release Evil Coin and rug pull the investors is perfect. It's perfect. Jay Roach, Mike Myers, if, if you somehow hear about this video, uh, get in touch with me, please. I would love to, um, you know, work on a treatment for this. I'm not saying I would be capable of writing the whole thing. Quite frankly, much like Beyonce, I'm not sure you can afford me. Uh, that being said, I'd love to be involved. I'm a big fan of the franchise, and uh, I think it, it, this would be very in keeping with modern times. If, if the problem with Austin Powers is that he's too hard to write for, hey, there's a, there's a central concept for you. It could work. You, you could think about how to get other people involved in the movie, like other characters. Like, for example, absolutely... Uh, there is no doubt that even though he's no longer evil, as evidenced in the third film, um, Mike Myers as Fat B-Word, I dare not say it, even though we've sworn once. Sweared? Sworn is when you swear on a Bible. Swear is when you cuss. Okay. Um, I guess I'll be taking this then. He definitely... He teams up with Austin. Mike Myers loves doing those, you know, like... He, he plays himself, or he, he, he as himself plays two different characters even in the same scene. He loves doing that sort of weird stuff. He, Austin Powers and Fat B-Word team up because Fat B-Word YOLO'd his life savings into Evil Coin. It was a sure thing, Austin! <laughs> That's not what he sounds like at all. 
It literally couldn't go tits up. Unlike me. You know, you could totally... Dude, it works. I'm gonna write it. We'll do it live, okay? I'm willing this into existence. I got that 3.01 p.m. energy right now. I don't even get the, the joke that you made there. I don't even know. He would just, like, grab his own nipple and lick it or something at that point. That's what he does. That's what he does in the movies. Don't, don't take it up with me. It's not my response. I, I didn't create the character. I'm just, you know, perfecting it. Anyway, so that was my day. <laughs> Pretty exciting stuff, if, if I do say so. If I do say so myself. Um, Stone Cold Steve Austin Powers. Appearing this summer. Well, this January in Austin Powers 4. I, I, I will acknowledge. I myself have said. Comedy sequels are never good. Um, and that's largely true. Especially many years after the fact. By the way, I'm realizing... Look, you can be mad all you want. Um, I should have... Taken Black Bean. Instead of taking nothing. But... Let's be honest. The odds of that actually making a meaningful difference on our run are essentially zero. Plus, black beans, not the best bean. Refried beans, the best bean. Plant more of those, please. Less? Stop planting pinto beans. Nobody likes them. Plant more of those refried ones. Everybody loves them. Minus two, minus two, trying too hard. Minus two. Okay, sure, minus two. Okay, sure. How about you minus two off your GPA? be sitting at a negative three. Oh, excuse me. You try to sneak this by me? You sussy baka. Thank you. There's a deal with the devil next floor. Feeling good. Yeah, they could make an Austin Powers 4. I'm excited. I'm not promising that it'll happen right away, but I am excited to have more time to uh, watch things. I, I'm excited to have more time to get a little exercise. I'm excited to have more time to get a little free time. I'm excited to watch things, though, and become more of a part of the public zeitgeist that I've been in a while. I don't want to be one of those parents where, you know, you ask them if they've seen a movie, and they're like, oh, did it come out before my child was born? And you're like, no. And they're like, then I haven't seen it. I don't want to, I want to stay in touch with the, I, I want to, I want to remain hip, you know? I'm, I'm already cool. It would be a shame to let that coolness go to waste. Excuse me? Beautiful shots. Go ahead, make my day. They made it, they've made my day. If you're gonna make my day, hey, make it a Friday, please. Welcome back. Don't make me any of those Mondays, man. I'm, I'm at a bit of a moral crisis and I'll explain it to you. Chris Pratt just got cast as Mario like a couple of months ago. Uh, a lot of backlash. People, I, I look. Chris Pratt, personal and political opinions aside, I just think is not a... I don't want to say he's not a great actor, because, like, what do I know? Like, I feel like a lot of the times when people are like, this person's a bad actor, what they really mean is they're in a lot of bad movies. But I will say it's not really true with Chris Pratt. Like, I I just feel like he's, he's more of, like, a one-note kind of, like... I mean, like, look, if you hate Marvel movies, and maybe, like, you hated some of the new Star Warses because they were very quippy, then Chris Pratt has to be, like, your least favorite actor of all time, right? Because he's basically, like, handsome guy uh, who quips. He's kind of like, you know, if, if Indiana Jones was not begrudging, but instead was, like, you know, written by Joss Whedon, that's kind of how I feel about Chris Pratt. Like, I... I I think he's an okay Star-Lord, you know, maybe even better than okay. He, he is the role, because I have no idea, I have no preconceived notion of what Star-Lord is like. <laughs> so for me, it's just Chris Pratt. Uh, and he was funny on Parks and Rec. I got nothing nothing negative to say about that, even though I haven't seen the whole series. Uh, but Jurassic Kingdom, you know, Jurassic World, they should say, Jurassic Kingdom. Uh, bad movie, uninspired performance. Movie exists exclusively to make money. Uh, most movies exist to make money, but maybe they're also like, we're gonna do something cool. This one, I, I think these movies, at least in my estimation, basically are like, let's just pump them out. Just get them out there. Um, 
Everyone loves seeing, you know, digital dinosaurs. I can't deny I'm in the same boat, but the movies are not good. Hold on, we, we can do something funky here. When you add a subject and a predicate. I meant to blow up the center line there, but whatever. Whatever, maybe you'll give me a bomb as a, as... No, okay. That's, you know, I'm not sweating it. It's still nice. Um, why don't, why don't you take this? You could use a little, little source. Uh, and we'll go to our item room as well. Uh, the Tomorrow War, just an absolute joyless experience, in my opinion. And Chris Pratt on inspiring in the role. But anyway, was cast as Mario to, you know, definite backlash. I don't really care, because, like, my philosophy, and maybe this is too cynical, but my philosophy is about, you know, there's like a 6% chance that that movie is going to be any, any good to begin with. Um, and if it's bad, it probably is not going to be Chris Pratt's fault. It will just be one of a highly predictable series of errors in a comedy of them that, uh, you know, leads to an overall mediocre product. He has also today been announced as being Garfield in the new Garfield movie. And I have seen a little bit of uh, backlash to that. And that's where I find myself somewhat confused. Because I'm like, if you dislike Chris Pratt, I think you should like love the fact that he's going to be Garfield. Because Garfield sucks. Hold on. Control, uh, no, just hit Q. There you go. I think you you should be happy that an actor you dislike is playing this character. Because the, the movie might be good, might be bad. But, like, even if it's good, who cares? It's Garfield, right? Like, he's... Him wasting his time being the lead in a Garfield movie is, like, uh... It means he's he's got that much less time to negatively affect a project that you actually enjoy. So, as far as I'm concerned, that's that's a big plus. I'm gonna be, you know, like 34 years old by the time this Garfield movie comes out. I ain't going to see that in the theaters. I'm not I'm not watching it on television unless it's so unimaginably bad that it makes it a so bad it's good tier. What do I care if they hire Chris Pratt to be the voice of Garfield, man? And if I... Sometimes people, they, like, try to own you. Or not, own is not the right word, but they try to get you, like, yeah, well, when your kid's older, you're gonna have to go see some of these kids' movies, then you'll care. Are you kidding me? No, I... I like, I can tell you with authority, I'm pretty sure I won't. Um, of course, you would probably rather see good movies. You know, you'd rather see, like, uh, uh, Toy Story 3 than, I don't know, Boss Baby 2. Uh, but... You're probably just, and I, I can't say this with 100% confidence yet, but I'm pretty sure as a parent, especially of a young child, you're just so happy to, A, be spending time with your child, but also, like, B, be able to sit quietly in a dark room for, like, an hour and a, exactly 90 minutes. Uh, I don't think you're going to be too picky. Even if it sucks, you're like, at least I can think. <laughs> At least I can I can just daydream for a bit without being interrupted. I think that's probably part of it, man. So if I end up having to see the Garfield movie in theaters, I would I would see it as an honor. I would I would gladly look to my left, look to my right, make eye contact with with all the other dads in the theater, and then we could all close our eyes at exactly the same time. Take a little dad nap in the middle of a day. I, we should be so lucky, you know? So I don't really concern myself with that. Mario, look. I actually think it's totally possible to make a good Mario movie. I'm just... I, I just need it to happen once with a video game before I... Uh, before I let myself believe, I guess. Because, like, there's no reason it should be impossible to make a good Mario movie. They made a good movie about Lego. And it's like, they're, they're building materials. Excuse me. Excuse me? Excuse me, sir? Excuse me? Thank you. There you go. He's going for it. He's going for it. There you go. Freeze him. Oh, no. He loves him. I don't want to lose my deal with the devil chance. That was weird. Okay, we didn't get a deal with the devil. That's okay, though. There's no, no sweat, man. This run's going okay. 
I mean, better than okay, to be honest. If they can make a good movie about Lego, there really should be, like, no excuse. Hold on. <coughs> Bless me. Okay. Yes. Uh, you need it. Lovely. That would be lovely. Like, the story of Mario is not that spectacular, obviously. But, like, the story of Lego is nothing. <laughs> so, if they... If they can make a good movie using, you know, just the inherited aesthetic of Lego and it had nothing else to go on, they had to build the rest from scratch, there's no reason they shouldn't at least... that, that the Mario project should be un, uh, irredeemable. That being said, will it be good? No, it's one of those things. Like, I... Until they make a, a an actually good video game movie, I'm gonna reserve judgment. I know they've made some that you like, okay? Everybody's got like one video game movie that they're like, actually is pretty good. But I mean one that is liked. I don't necessarily mean by critics, but I, like by the majority of people that watched it. And I don't think we've gotten there. There's some horrible ones. I mean, of all the, the movie movies based on video games, I know I've said this before, but I actually... Uh, I mean, the fact that Jake Gyllenhaal did Prince of Persia is, like, is, is almost unfathomable to me. Um, it's so bad, I turned it off on an airplane. Like, I just stared at the screen in front of me rather than actually watch any more of Prince of Persia. Um, and even then, like, the Assassin's... Not Assassin's Creed. The, the Max Payne movie is so much worse. Like, the... It's... It's completely irredeemable it's it's unbelievable that it got made in the first place quite frankly i mean i guess we'll apply this to you just because the bob's rotten head charges so fast anyway i like that they're like back to back here like they got each other uh covered i got your six no i got your six hey hands off my six baby are you trying to funge my token <laughs> Scott Evil, are you trying to funge my token? Oh man, I'm still thinking about Austin Powers 4, man. They could st Can we, we Okay, Dr. Evil gets- Okay, this at the scene. Dr. Evil in his chair is holding court over a conference. Present number two, Scott Evil, now fully bald to, father, to follow in his father's footsteps. Frau Farbissa now. The reader may say, who's that? She goes, send you the clowns! You know, she's, she screams really loudly. Um, number two says, Dr. Evil, you may proceed. Thank you, number two. <laughs> anyway, the punchline is that they're called NFEs instead of NFTs. Non-fungible entities. Say it's an entity. Okay, you know, I can't write this. I need to, we're gonna need to hire an, a pro to write this joke for me. But the joke is that they're NFEs for non-fungible evil entities or something like that. Just just think about it. Look, they didn't write the script in a day. They get to punch it up a little bit. They get to hire incredibly talented, you know, comedians to come in and try to have them write good jokes and then be like, no, that joke will never work. Let's just have them. Uh, let, let's have Dr. Evil move in his chair and it sounds like a fart. That's gold, Jerry. Gold. Speaking of which. Evil NFTs? <laughs> Something, something's wrong with me. Because I love this. Okay, let's let's do something like this. I'm okay with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Okay, sure, we got no other option. Why not? What the heck was I talking about? Oh, yeah, the Mario Brothers movie. Like, like I said, I'm excited to watch things again. Relevant stuff, like the Mario movie. Probably won't see that, but... Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, ending explained. Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, Tony Lung, origin story. Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, Sima Lu, workout plan, is coming to Disney Plus uh, in a few days. This week sometime. Pretty, 
I mean, when I say stoked, I don't I don't feel stoked on the same level that like, you know, you're like, oh my god, I can't Nintendo 64! I'm not like that. I'm more like, I'm stoked. Like, yeah, I'll watch that when it comes out. Probably cry a little bit, maybe squirt some. So are we just gonna like live in the walls now? If these walls could talk, man, you know what they would say? They'd probably say, let me out. Let me out of these walls, George. Let me out. Jimmy, I'm in the walls. It, it, minus two, he's lost it. Been a lot of, I, I think part of the the inspiration for Dr. Evil's new NFE line is that there's been some uh, talk about NFTs on Twitter today, and that's probably true no matter what day you're listening to this. Um, and there was uh, a picture I saw of George Costanza with edited text. It said, he funged my token, Jerry. They're non-fungible. That's the whole point. And then I thought in my head of Jerry going, well, it seems like he funged. Are they really non-fungible? Because it seems like... You got funged. Jerry, you don't funge another man's token. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is Kramer now. He's shaking his, his finger. Oh, yeah. He funged. He's a funger. <laughs> I didn't funge. I saved. I, I, I put it on my clipboard. I copy-pasted. That's not a funge. Okay, I don't know. what I've lost my mind, but hopefully it's entertaining at least. Hopefully, it's a little bit entertaining. No? Okay, I'm hearing that the answer to that is no. Don't care, didn't ask. Plus, Jerry Seinfeld dated a 17-year-old when he was 32. I know! Okay, I know! I didn't know it when I formed the memories of the show. That makes me still love the show to this day, okay? Because I was like 11, but now I know. But he still, I, he still haunts me day after day. Don't, don't judge me by Jerry's razor, okay? That's all I say. Um, I'm gonna get out of this room because this room is not built for Jacob and Esau. Let's just be honest. It's going to be so funny when we win this run, even though we lost that Brimstone run earlier. Yesterday. <laughs> yesterday's earlier. I mean, hey, when I said yesterday's earlier, this will blow your mind. That was earlier. Everything's earlier except for the things that ain't happened yet. Or the things that are happening right now. But right now only exists for but a brief, intestinal moment of time. You know, people say things like, you know, in, in like meditation or buddhism or you know even in like stoicism people say things like you know there's no such thing as the past there's no such thing as the future you only live in the present i'm like i'm at the exact opposite of that i feel like there's no such thing as the present because by in the in the moment that you take to perceive that you are living in the present the present moment you were trying to perceive is already in the past so when people say live in the present, I'm like, that is impossible, my man. Live in the present? I'm exclusively going to live in the past and future. You can't live in the present. Look, there it goes. You try to grab it, it slips away. It's like trying to hold on to a wet balloon. You know what? You've been to birthday parties. Come on. You've been to birthday parties. You're going to try to tell me you've never been to a birthday party outside? Swimming pool? Wet balloon? You never heard of, of Nana? 99 wet balloons. I can't get a grip on these wet balloons. Where are my dry balloons? Why can't I hold all these balloons? Great song. Great song. I don't know what it's about. It's, it, that's why I don't respect it. It seems like it's just a song about balloons. Like, I mean, she could have used something. Like, she had that opportunity to actually make a song that had, like, I don't know, even like an anti-war message or something like that. Instead, she just wants to write songs about balloons? Come on. Embarrassing. Okay. Doesn't matter what we grab as long as we get both. Um, yeah, that's fine, man. Take me down. I think 
Okay, we're going up on this one. That's right. Take me up, because I'm going to... Blue baby fields. Nothing is real. Da -da 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 -da. Anyway. Anyway, what's going on, everybody? Has the video started? I've been, I'm honestly, like, living inside of my Austin Powers 4 script right now. Oh, man. We'll call it Evil Coin. Uh, this is number two speaking now. Dr. Evil, I regret to inform you. Evil Coin has already been spoken for. It's a secondary token based on villains from horror movie franchises. Well, crap. Evilium? Dun, dun, one mil, one quadrillion tokens. <laughs> oh man, this could work, man. I'm beginning to think this, uh, this could work. Hey, can I tell you something else? It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas out there. If you work in the radio or at a shopping mall. Everywhere else? Hey, well, or you're outside of America because we, we don't have that uh, American Thanksgiving buffer up here. I don't want it, man. I don't, how come I don't want it, man? No, thank you. Take me down. Dude, we're, we're absolutely going to win. Hey, look, I've run out of things to say. Let's be real. You knew it would happen. It's kind of impressive that it took until 25 minutes into the video instead of like, you know, 45 seconds, which had been the norm recently. And I haven't even done anything today. It's just like my brain is actually like kind of working because it's not the very early in the morning times. Hope you've enjoyed your Halloween, by the way. We got, th this happens every year and I, I don't have the heart to have the the meaning of the minds with my wife over this one. Last year, right, we had the baby. We have to stay at home, like, all the time. It's still peak pandemic, of course. Um, so she got really excited about the idea that kids might come to our house for Halloween. Bought a bunch of candy, made a bunch of, like, you know, gift bags and stuff like that. No kids came to our house for Halloween. Or maybe, like, one came, and then we were like, oh, wow, they started early. And then nobody came for the rest of the night, right? This time... She was like, I mean, she was she was huffing the copium a little bit, and I can't blame her, right? She was like, well, last year, everybody was much more concerned about the pandemic than they are this year. I just realized just now that I had took the Bible to use on mom, didn't use it on mom. Let me apologize. Those are my words, not hers. Um, and I was like, yeah, it's true. So we bought some candy. This year, we literally got no kids <laughs> for trick-or-treating. Um... But I think it's a, a, a good lesson about adult life is when you, I, I think when you're and I especially apply this to the young men out there because I, this is who I see it in the most. But I might have a, a selection bias. OK. A lot of us, when we were younger, we're under the we're laboring under a delusion that there is a goal in life to be, uh, to have everything as close to the objective truth as possible. Everything should be evaluated fairly by the same metric. Um, and we should always seek to right wrongs. If somebody's incorrect, we should illustrate to them why they are incorrect and they will thank us for having made their life better. Even if it has a material negative effect on their current life, they will feel fulfilled for being closer to the truth. This is insane, and I would like to disabuse you of that notion as soon as possible. Um, sometimes, I, I'm a big believer instead in the idea that you gotta pick your battles. And this is a battle I don't wanna pick for a couple reasons. One is, it's nice that, uh, you know, maybe one day we will get some kids for Halloween, and then we'll be happy we had the candy, and I won't be the idiot that was like, don't buy candy this year, we never get kids, then we'll get a bunch of kids and look like the house on the street that never gives out candy. Hey, here's another reason for you. Um, it's not like the candy's going to waste. We buy it, no kids come, oh no, now I gotta eat all this candy, you know? It's not the end of the world. Thirdly, I think it's nice to let people have little dreams. You know what I mean? Like, I always, I, I hear this a lot, like, 
people who uh, you know claim to be enlightened don't, will like not they'll admonish the lottery, okay? And the lottery is like genuinely uh, just from an economic sense, it's bad. You pay money for an infinitesimal chance to change your life. Um, the, the chances are so low of you winning a life-changing amount of money that the human brain is essentially incapable of uh, making a rational decision surrounding it. Absolutely. But I'm, I wouldn't say I'm pro-lottery, but here's what, I, here's what I think about the lottery. I think as long as you keep it within a reasonable limit, you know, maybe you're at five bucks a week or something like that, okay? Or, or just now and then even is also fine. I think it's a reasonable price to pay to just enjoy some plausible dreaming about what it would be like to win. That's, I mean, my, my parents uh, play the lottery w within their financial means. It's, it's also like, I don't know if people in like younger generations, including my own, uh, can can actually fathom this, but the lottery is almost like a social thing. Like one of my mom's favorite discussion topics is what the Lotto Max 649 jackpot is. She's like, well, we got a few tickets for the lottery this weekend. The prize is, you know, 60 million. You got to give it a try. Like it's almost something that, that people use as like a social lubricant to like talk with one another. Admittedly, it seems a little silly to, to some people that like, you know, well, you're spending money on something that is an intangible benefit, but I think I understand it. I do the same thing like, uh, you know, we go to see the Canucks from time to time. Sometimes if it's, you know, if I have space to actually like walk around, I'll buy some tickets to the 50-50 lottery. And what, what, what do I expect to get? I expect to get nothing. Uh, which is proven true every single time. <laughs> but for a period and a half, especially when a game is bad and you're not entertained, <laughs> for a period and a half, you get to go, man, imagine, wow, tonight's jackpot, $246,000. Imagine if we won that. Wouldn't that be cool? And then they show you the tickets and they're like literally 10,000 off of the number that you were on and you're like, okay, that really does a good job of illustrating how many people are playing this. Um, but you, you get like, you know, two hours of being like, oh, that'd be nice. So as long as you're not, oh, 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 oh. as long as you're not doing it in a way that's, okay, I'm stupid. As long as you're not doing it to the extent that it's, like, actually harmful to your overall budget, then what do I care, man? And trust me, I'm that guy that's like, you know, well, instead of putting $5 a week in a lottery, you could put, if you put $20 a month into the S&P 500 and then looked at it over uh, an amortization of 7% uh, annual gain per year, let's pretend that current inflation trends are transitory, and then, you know, look at that, you, be, you could buy yourself, uh, that might be, like, an extra year of retirement or something like that, but... Also, I'm like, you gotta enjoy yourself to some extent. It, it, it depends what you like, you know? So I, I'm just, I'm surprised at the admonishment of the lottery. Admittedly, when people spend like hundreds of dollars a week, or really like anything that's outside of their budgetary ability to do, then like, obviously, yeah, that's bad. But hey, remember what Eiffel 65 said, too much of heaven can bring you underground. Heaven can always turn around. Too much of heaven. My life is so... And then his voice goes like a robot. He goes, hellbound. Heaven, yeah. We'll always turn around. Too much of... You ever, you ever listen to Europop? It's kind of a it's kind of a bad album, but it's got a unique sound. That's for sure. I have a blue house with a blue window. What is... Dude, Crystal Key actually... Uh... Low key, the best trinket ever made. Blue is the color of all that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. We've already probably given bookworm to the wrong unit, so I can't give you bookworm. You piece. This is the way we want it. Kind of, this is the way we want it. Anyway, so I'm like, you know. It's that, that being, it's funny. But I've, I've previously talked about gambling as well. I don't really... When I say I don't understand the appeal of gambling, or let me rephrase. When I say that I personally don't feel the pull of gambling, 
What I mean by that is I don't understand, like, you know, the... The actual... The thrill that comes with an uncertain outcome that could be disproportionately beneficial. What I really mean is the, you know, casino gambling in particular. I understand where the dopamine comes from. But I don't know, I feel like there's something... Maybe economically it makes little difference. But I do feel like there's... There's like a, a subtle difference that comes from like, hey, going to the convenience store, paying 20 bucks for some lottery tickets, and then checking them in the newspaper. Versus like, I'm gonna spend an hour at the casino pressing... Like, there, there's an ad that... And, and again, I'm not trying to really judge anybody's hobbies here. You like what you like. And, and I mean that actually sincerely, not like in the way where people are like, you like what you like, but I wouldn't be caught dead doing it. But there's an ad for BC casinos that's all over, you know, the hockey games right now. And it shows like a, a lady, she's getting dressed up to the nines. You know, she's she's getting ready for a night out on the town and it shows her internal monologue. And she says, this lady's got a date with the slots. And I'm like, that sounds kind of sad. <laughs> Sorry, but like. I'm, and part of me is like, wouldn't you rather have like a date with another human being? But uh, I'm also like, you know. I, you're getting dressed up to like sit at the chair in front of like the pyramids of Egypt and then like you know you I got three you know uh, King Tut Sphinx statues in a row like it I, may, I, I maybe I just don't get it I, I'm not trying to get myself in trouble I'm not trying to annoy people or anything it's just like I'm almost like a little bit less Judgmental is not the word I should use here, because I'm not being judgmental. I feel like I'm being sympathetic. <laughs> but I'm like a little bit less... Or I'm a little bit more understanding, I guess, when I see someone like, you know, in sweatpants at the slot machine. I'm like, you needed your fix. I understand that. I'm not always, you know, looking at... I don't put a suit on to go to Starbucks at 7.15 in the morning, right? Like, I just... Mobile order for Ryan. Oh, uh, six Trente cold brews? Here you go. You know, if I put a suit on and I was like, it's Starbucks time! Gray skies are gonna clear up! Like, that's where I would be like, you gotta, that's a cry for help, man. Anyway. What was I saying? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I wouldn't, I wouldn't go so far as to say that I support the lottery. Um, what I would say is, um... I, I don't uh, demonize it to that extent, I suppose. Did you know, I don't know if this is true in every city, but I remember reading about, because people always say like numbers racket. He was running the numbers. And uh, I, I had to look up what the numbers were. If you're not familiar, the numbers, also known as the racket, also known as the numbers racket, also known as the numbers game, also known as Billy Two Shoes, uh, also known as, uh, it, it, it was like an unsanctioned, lottery run by the mafia it actually the new york version of it got shut down uh by the city because the payout was so good like the margin for the mafia was smaller than the margin for state and civic lotteries at the time that they had to shut down the the mafia numbers racket because the city and state lotteries couldn't compete it's so funny anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it. if you did click the like button Helps out a great deal. Feels good to be back, and I'll see you next time. See ya!